Hello everybody and welcome. Today we're going to show you how to install Ubuntu server on ESXi or an ESXi host. Um, I already have my ESXi host running and I'm going to connect to it with a VI client. Uh, there's multiple ways to do this, but I recommend using the VI client because it's probably the most intuitive and quickest way to get you up uh, with Ubuntu running as a virtual machine. Uh, if you don't have your VI client, you can actually just point the web browser to the local IP of your ESXi host and the first link is to download the VMware infrastructure client. So now we're connected here and you can see I have one virtual machine already running. What we're going to do is we're going to add in another one. This is going to be our Ubuntu server. So we're actually going to be running Windows and Linux on this ESXi host. Actually I'm going to choose custom. I like to actually choose all my options. I'm just going to name it Ubuntu server. And uh, I have two hard drives installed on my machine. One's, one of the hard drives runs the ESXi host. Uh, it runs the footprint. And the other one is my data store, which is going to run the virtual machine. So I'm going to choose a Linux host. I'm going to give it 512 RAM. If you have more memory, you can give it more memory. Choose what you'd like. Uh, we're basically saying that we want to connect uh, the network to the virtual machine, give it an IP address, or basically bond it to or bind it to a, a physical NIC card is how I think of it. It's actually not the physical NIC card, it's the, the network that you choose, and then the VM network you choose, and the VM network is binded to a physical NIC. Alright, so we're going to create a 10 gig partition, something small here. We're just going to choose that we want it to go onto the data store and not the ESXi host. Just going to click finish, and now you're going to see that we do have another Ubuntu server VM installed. Well, it's not actually installed yet. We've uh, allocated resources for it but we got to start it up so we're just going to hit the start button here and I'm going to open up the console and at this point I actually have the ISO on my desktop of my machine here so I'm going to mount that if I connect to an ISO image I'm going to choose my Ubuntu server image what I like to do is I like to actually just send control to leave restart the session here and it's going to should boot do the Ubuntu install, which it did. Very nice. So it's going to be just a normal install. It's going to be identical as if you were installing this as a physical machine, but we're actually doing it in a virtual machine where we've allocated 512 RAM and pretty much a 10 gig hard drive. I'm going to speed up the video here so you guys don't have to see the install. You, I'm sure you've all done an Ubuntu install. There's nothing really fancy about it other than you're doing it within the VI client, which is pretty slick. So I'm going to speed it up here real quick. Alright, so what I did is I just went through the Ubuntu installation and we just finished up on the installation. Like I said, I didn't want to go too deep into the installation portion because that's not why we're here. Um, as you can see, when it finishes up, you're going to see that the VM or the Ubuntu server is just going to restart like any other machine except for you know, instead of physically going to the machine and hooking up a monitor, this is your console. I mean, this is how you watch it boot if you want. Um, I'm going to show you a couple examples of how we're going to enable SSH, and we're going to use PuTTY to SSH into the machine, and you're going to see that. It doesn't really matter if it's a, a VM or not. It, uh, it, it functions the same way. You allocate certain resources to it, like 512 RAM, um, a certain amount of hard drive, and even down to the processor, how much processor you want to give it. So I'm going to log in here, <coughs> uh, wrong, user, wrong username, wrong password because I got some fat fingers obviously, and oh, I guess it was just slow. Anyway, um, I'm going to install Ubuntu, I'm sorry, OpenSSH, so we can get port 22 rolling here, and uh, many ways to do this, I just want to show you a quick example. And while this is installing, I want to show you what you can do within the VI client. You can actually see performance of this virtual machine and only this virtual machine, how much processor intensive it is, um, how much disk, how much I.O. is going on. Um, you can see during the installation, there was a lot of uh, I.O. It makes sense. It's installed into the hard drive. Uh, how much memory we're using versus how much memory is allocated. Um, network, how much bandwidth you're utilizing on this VM, this virtual machine only. So this is only the Ubuntu server. I can go over my Windows server and I can see how that one specifically is doing. Or I can come up to the ESXi host 
and I can see how the e whole host is doing. So how how my overall physical machine is doing. I can take a snapshot and look at how much bandwidth is coming in and out. Uh, and it's pretty slick. It's pretty powerful stuff. <clears throat> so anyway, we can now got uh, SSH running. We can go to our console and run a number of commands to see that SSH is in fact running. You can see that the the port is open. It's listening state. So uh, let's use SSH client or PuTTY, whatever you prefer. I'm going to show both. I'm going to show you SSH client. Actually, we got to first see. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. We got to see if it actually got an IP address, which it did. It's a 134. Um, we're going to connect to this host on 134 IP address. Uh, so I'm going to click connect. Same username. Um, yes, this is the first time it wants to accept the key. And you can log in as a normal person. So you could, you know, port forward this with your firewall, your router, whatever. Give an SSH login to your friends, and you pretty much got an encrypted uh, FTP server in a sense. Uh, you can upload, download, uh, upload or download files to the server, and it, they're totally encrypted because SSH is fully encrypted. Uh, so that's an example of how you can use the SSH client. Um, PuTTY, for those of you who are familiar with PuTTY, you can do the same exact thing. just want to show you that it doesn't matter whether it's a virtual machine or not. If you can get an Ubuntu server up and running as quickly, whether it's physical or not, it's very cool stuff. Fat fingers. And you can see we're logged in. We can run the top command to see how, how this host is rolling. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to show you, how easy it is to get any virtual machine, Linux, Windows, get and rolling with ESX and ESXi. Uh, one thing I should note is, you know, with ESXi, there's really cool things you can do with uh, the backups. You know, normally when you back up your files, you're only getting your files. But if, you know, you get a virus or get infected, you have to reinstall the whole OS. So the cool thing about... Um, ESXi is it basically holds it all into one uh, couple files and if you back up those couple files you basically have an image almost like an ISO or a snapshot of your uh, basically of your virtual machine so you don't have to ever re reinstall uh, a machine again you should never have it activate again um, very cool stuff if you ask me okay this is what I actually wanted to show you about uh, backing up your virtual machines. Uh, if you go to the main ESXi host and go to the data store, uh, you can browse the data store. And you can upload things to their images, download things, and if you shut down your Ubuntu server, you could just back up these files right here, and you could have them import those into another ESXi host. You could, I believe, put those into VMware Workstation. Um, pr pretty much you're making your operating system mobile within these files. Uh, we haven't even talked about snapshots, but how you can use snapshots on your virtual machine, basically install a patch, say it screws up uh, the configuration, screws up your, your production machines, you can go right back, if you did a snapshot before the update, go right back to that very date before the update was installed, and you basically have um, basically never done the update, and you can roll right back on the fly with snapshots. Anyway, that's not why we're here. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. But anyway, that's what I wanted to show you, that uh, installing... Ubuntu in a virtual machine infrastructure like ESX or ESXi. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for coming by.